Welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. You said you had a lovely story for us all today? Not so much a story as much as an advertisement. I was uh, actually killing some time before uh, recording today. And I went to a Craigslist, of all places. I, I, I'm one of those people, some people go there for entertainment. I hardly ever go to craigslist because you, you said it sound, you made it sound like it was a story you're like i went to a craigslist today like down the street from me there was a craigslist <laughs> you know list. you know the craigslist across from the subway yeah that one no oh yeah yeah i know that one it's nice craigslist yeah yeah way better than the one down on like uh way down on main on main street market no did you uh, not though you can find some sweet stuff on craigslist I just, when looking for a place down here, I got several, like, total scams right in a row. And even the place I wound, it at, wound up in, it's still <laughs> a little bit of a scam. But, you know, best is going to get in this town, I guess. But anyway. Um, I don't know about best. <laughs> I think best is... Best for what I can do. Best for what I... <laughs> yeah, I best say. for what I am... What, what I'm financially a, a, able to do. If the best is the evil Dr. Wong, then... <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wong. Yeah, no. Let me say it would be racist if it wasn't true, but yeah. But he is the evil Doctor Wong. Yeah, he's not even a doctor, but it's just easy to can think of him that way. So uh, anyway, the good doctor, uh, the good Doctor Wong. No, so, good anyway. Doctor Wong. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I was just killing time on Craigslist today, looking for uh, just sometimes I don't know. I just figured I'd look for like miscellaneous jobs related to like animation and graphic design and whatnot. Then I just fell down this hole of just looking. I'm, just, well, I'm here. Might as well look at some weird fucked up shit. And I just went into people seeking people. And That's a great one on San Francisco. Well, you think you'd find some gen- some really funny things. But in all honesty, though, it wasn't really creative. Yeah, sure. It was rough R-rated shit. And like, like X-rated porn shit. Like, you know, like uh, looking to suck a donkey dick. You know, whatever. You know, just. But it's nothing that really le- leading to like a whole lot of imagination. I thought in San Francisco of all places, I would find some shit that's like really weird, bizarre. But no, nothing. Just like looking for a young, hot, eager cock to jam in my mouth. But nothing. nothing that's all I could really find. Nothing beyond like, no, nothing with any real originality to it. Before I knew it, though, I ended up in just not even. Um, I end, it almost went from more R-rated to more PG-rated shit. But first thing I came across, before I want to talk about our main story, I came across this one little thing. Actually, favorite. I'm going to have to clear my search engine once we're done with this, after all this, because, like, a little thing popped up, like, oh, Craigslist would like to know what you're searching. Like, a little thing pops up so we can make it more easier for you. I was like, no, 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 I'm good. So, yeah, I'm going to have to detox my computer once I'm done with this for the day. Okay, here's the headline. Mm-hmm. Everybody go to Maine. As in the state? The state Maine. Not like okay. the r- road Maine, maybe? Yeah, no, this is everybody go to Maine. Okay, so what's, it, what's the article entail now? This is within uh, personal rants and raves. So is this guy just angry at the people in San Francisco? Like, I'm sick and tired. I've been living here for 80 fucking years. And before it used to be a great place. Now there's all these fucks here. from not. They're not even from California anymore. They're from Georgia and they're from fucking New York and Tennessee and... I need some goddamn Californians here. I can't tell if it's like somebody, if he's like, I can't tell exactly. If he's mad, he's just like, you know, Maine's such an awesome place. We all gotta go to Maine, guys. Come on, let's move to Maine. I can't tell if it's that or if he's just like pissed off. He's like, just just go to Maine. I'm, just, I'm tired of looking at people. I'm just, just stupid. Go to Maine. But yeah, here, let me. Uh, he's not like a travel agent for Maine, maybe. It, he could, he possibly very well could be, actually. I mean, this could be an advertisement for Maine. Let me read about this. Let me read it for you. Everybody go to Maine. I think it's a great idea. Go to Maine. Get your lazy ass out of California. Drink Kool-Aid in Maine. And, then, many and this isn't personals, you're saying, right? Personals. Okay. And what's personal about this? We need these lame-ass immigrants out of Texas, Alabama, Kentucky, like we need another hole in our head. Unless, of course, you're some skinny chick with little tits. Feel free to stay. 
all you BBWs that occupy the internet, it's now your choice to exit, drink water in Maine, and keep some guy warm with your blubber. <laughs> drink water in Maine. Wash your car in Maine. Go, go, baby. A Maine is waiting in Maine. Yeah, the song runs out there. So is, is, is that the whole article? This is really this guy is trying to sell us Maine, is what he's doing. It, it's a mix of like he it wants to get like people it. to like get out of here, but also like experience Maine. Like I really want you to get out, get the fuck out of here. But here's the thing: if you're gonna go anywhere, let me tell you where to go. He's like just like a snake oil salesman, like Maine. Let's take it, folks. Maine. I think hop on the hop on the this the steam engine. You can head Maine. You know. It's, it's sort of what he is, but it sounds more like yeah, but fucking Maine. So fucking awesome. It's got like cool shit there and stuff. Unless you got like tits or whatnot, like they don't fucking go because you know they'll freeze off or a fucking a lobster is gonna get a hold of them and stuff. And you don't want that. I mean, like I, I've had that happen to me. You know, being a dude, you know, and you know. Last thing you need is a tit lobster coming after you. Yeah. Hey, That's the one thing about a Maine. That's why if you got tits, don't show up in Maine. Otherwise, the tit lobster's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but really, get hire this guy to advertise for their state. Go to Maine. Yeah, he'll, he'll be he'll be he be like the mascot of Maine now. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get the well, visual. Wait. This has to be a joke. I'm assuming this has to be a joke. I can't imagine anybody really taking this too seriously. You know, like see, like I mean, there is some shit. If you look, if you look and like rants and raves there is enough kind of like you know just stupid racist shit you'll see that uh that you know it's like oh this is just some dumbass that watches a lot of fox news but really I th i'm pretty sure this has to be a joke right here now is there like a number to call for this or whatnot like did he leave like a callback info this is just rants and raves this is just someone speaking his mind on craigslist on Craigslist, yeah, that they I didn't, know that. They had, I didn't know they had that option on there. Yeah, they got a little blog spot. They got a little blog spot in Craigslist. Huh, that must be somewhat new. I don't know. I feel like yeah. I would have stumbled across this back in the day, but it, it's like in the. It's in your. It's right in your. Uh, it's right in personal. Oh, like, okay. Right your, people seeking people. Here's a little. Here's a little interesting one right here. I mean, I'll be honest. Part of me feels like I'm kind of. Um, exploiting so someone but fuck them they posted on the internet so anyway <laughs> they exploited themselves when they did that yeah but clearly this guy wants someone to see it age 35 santa cruz tagline real big fish top right balcony m4w 35 santa cruz hi you are sitting at a table <laughs> along the rail of the upper right balcony Possibly nursing a bottle of Lagunitas IPA, looking super cute in your red. In your red, not red dress, just red. Okay. All right, hold on. Give me a second. Looking super cute in your red? Question mark. Dress in brown hair. Okay. Dress in brown hair is a other sentence. Suddenly, I never noticed that before in this. Okay. Anyway, I really wanted to talk to you, but thought the douchebag standing next to you was your BF. When RB when <laughs> when RBF you know real big fish RBF <laughs> finished their set before the uh, before the encore you put on your ho hoodie got up and left I was so surprised you were alone I forgot to capitalize didn't have time to say hello I would be absolutely ecstatic to meet you listen to some good ska. And at le least know your name. I was the guy wearing the black bunny gang shirt, covered in sweat from skating, from skanking. So this guy, we, we gotta look for the real big fish when we get there. That's what it said, right? Real big fish. Like They're the band. A, apparently at a, at a real big fish concert. Yeah. Huh. Santa and so Cruz. like this guy's one. So he's assuming that people already sort of know who he is. Like they like if you've been in Santa Cruz, you must have seen this guy at some point. Have you seen the guy? Oh yeah, yeah, the guy in the uh, bunny gang shirt, cut, covered in sweat from skanking all night, right? Yeah, because you know. Oh, that guy. He, I remember him. I remember him. On the off chance, this uh, this girl drinking Lagunitas IPA and a nice brown dress? Question mark. Noticed him and just came across this right here. Weird. I don't know. P people and their IPAs too. It seems like everybody's drinking this IPA just because somebody else told them to. I've tried it. It's not my favorite, but people do suddenly like Indian pale ales a lot. 
I know it's been around for like ever, and then all of a sudden it's just like the the hip thing to drink. Uh, I think it's craft brewers. I think generally what happened. I mean, if I had to guess, I'm no like I'm no like uh, beer, beer snob. I'm no beer snob or beer beer aficionado, but if I had to guess, it was probably since they taste kind of bitter and kind of stronger. There's probably a harder thing for maybe like b- like Budweiser or whatever to sell. So now that we got a bunch of like. Uh, the big gut now we got this big like craft brewing industry i think maybe now they're a little bit more popular i don't know maybe just the flavor of the month but we'll see yeah flavor of the year plus <laughs> yeah, well, you know whatever i mean i, I mean i, I enjoy i'm not saying anything against them but it just it just seems like nowadays it's just like whenever you hear somebody say like they're drinking a beer or you see somebody drinking a beer it's always an ipa it's just like it almost feels like the unoriginal beer to drink at the moment i mean i might have one once in a while i barely I'm not, have once again i'm not saying anything against it just yeah. just, just say it I, you, know. you, hardly, you hardly ever drink, though. What, what do you usually drink if you do? Um, I, I hardly ever drink. I always go for a darker beer, but not maybe an Indian pale ale. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're more of a stout if, guy. If, if anything, I always like the um, Sam Adams one. But mm-hmm. that's if I if I was going to go to like someplace and order something, it'd probably be that. And that's just knowing that that's going to be there. Because everything else is up to random. Definitely, it's it's the light beer thing. That this is something always bothers me because whenever I go places, I like I have this thing now where I watch people and see what they buy, and people are always buying light beers. They're getting Coors Light, they're getting fucking Bud Light, and all this stuff, and you kind of go, it tastes like piss. Well, well, what's the point of drinking? I mean, the whole point about light beers is you're gonna end up drinking more beers, throwing way more calories into you, and you're just gonna get fatter in the long run. You know. Just drink a reg. If you drink a regular Budweiser, you could drink like two of them and you'd be fine. But those people end up drinking like six Bud Lights, and then then they wonder why they're so goddamn fat. You know what I mean? It's just like oh, I know exactly it, what you it, mean. Be, okay, gonna, I'll say this: It'd be different if I you said in like a restaurant for eleven years. If you went on your lunch break and you're like, "Oh, I just want to have a beer, but I don't want to get like you know hammered right now. Maybe I'll just have one light beer." I could see where it, it, that would be the case. But when people are buying beer to go home, why would you? Why on God? Why would you fucking take a light beer home? Because it's like, you know, nobody, I mean, unless you're that guy, it's like, I just like the beer taste. You're probably no duels, man, if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which I don't get that. I mean, we, we have a buddy named Kyle. I remember one time I looked at him like, why the hell are you buying a big, you know, case of light beer? Why don't you just get some regular ones? And he's just like, I just want to drink a lot of beer. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess logical <laughs> answer. <laughs> For, so if it's a numbers game you're after, then maybe the light beer is the choice. But I don't know. Takes What's your thoughts on the light beer thing? Does that... Does that just seem to seem like a silly thing? I mean, if you're going to drink a beer, why don't you drink a beer? That's if I, I want say. to, hmm, if I got to drive home and I want to drink, I think a light beer is a safe choice because, I mean, it doesn't by any means. I mean, I don't really know the alcohol ratio more to any, to another beer, but it just seems like it doesn't. Oh, like, you're crapping out. Okay. Talk can you hear me all right? Can you hear yeah. me? It takes, a, it takes a bunch for me to get a faint buzz off a of Bud Light or a Coors Light. So uh, if I have nowhere to be, so if I so if I kind of got somewhere I got to be, but somebody wants me to have a drink with them real quick, I might I might get just a light beer just out of. But that's that's different though. That's not that's not at home. that's that, that's not like oh I'm drinking this for enjoyment. It's like okay I'm being social. I'm having a beer with my friend, but I don't have to worry about getting too hammered or nothing like that. That's all yeah. that is. Beyond that, not, I'm, beyond that, hey, I'm, I'm talking about taking it home though. Like when people get beer and go home. Doesn't no, I know. Like, yeah, it just seems like why. Exactly. That's that's what I'm getting after. Because I, I do agree. I think if you're having a light beer and you're having it and you're like, okay, I just I'm, I'm gonna go hang out with a couple buddies. I just want to have one beer, you know, you know, then that, that's it. Then I understand. But if you're going home, and the whole point is these people, the people that buy this light beer, the people that want to get drunk in the first place. So why why taking the extra calories? Because you're gonna end up drinking so many more of them just to get that same buzz effect. They explain it really well in SLC, even though they're not talking about light beer, but they're talking about the beer, like in Utah, how like they minus the alcohol content. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm I'm there with you. I'm not even. I'm by no means even a beer snob. Like Cisco's a huge beer snob, and he educates me sometimes and all that shit. Whenever I go to his place, he has a new beer he wants to try out or show me, and usually it's pretty good. I think he has good taste, but he definitely he loves his IPAs and he loves he kind of he's all over the place with that. But yeah, yeah, I, he's I'm, got I'm actually, a thousand different choices. That's about I'm, the only place I ever have like random beers that I would never have anywhere else. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, and it's in like, uh, well, he showed me this documentary called, I think it was Beer Wars or, or Craft Brew, Craft Beers, the movie. It was something like that. And basically just shows how the main three, now the main two, because uh, Miller and uh, 
Miller and Coors combined, um, how they basically just try and put all the little guys out of business and their like shitty tactics they do. So now it makes you feel bad for having anything that's owned by one of the main three. And I was just like, yeah, well, I, I, I used to, I drink Blue Moon a lot. Yeah, well, Blue Moon's owned by by Coors Light. Like, oh, well, fuck. Well, Shock Top's pretty. Yeah, they're owned by yeah. Budweiser. Oh. Well, fuck, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you realize a lot of those beers that you thought were just kind of like somebody else's beer are owned by a bigger company. So now, I mean, if they're there and that's all they got, I'll get them. But I try to go for more of the independent stuff. So uh, if I do get a beer, now it's not to be some snob. It's just like I'd rather have my money go to like a small independent brewery as opposed to some big one. But I mean, Blue Moon, if it's I'll, if, if there's nothing else there I want, I'll still get that. Cause whatever. Good beer is a good beer. Oh, if it's Blue Moon over Coors Light, well, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Exactly. And that's most of the, like, you know, perfect example. Here's the thing. When you're at that Sharks game, how many choices did they give you? Um, They gave, let's see. They had, like, I want to say they had Guinness. They had Coors Light. They had Bud Light. Regular Budweiser. Blue Moon. Um, They're probably, I believe, all owned by the major companies. And then um, that's the only ones that are coming to mind. Those are the only ones coming to mind. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. And then um, Shock Top and, like, a uh, metal bottle. But the thing about those, they were all $9 for a beer. I'm like, no, I don't need it that badly. We're all going to get drinks. We're, we're all going to get fucked up and belligerent after this game anyway. So no need. Yeah, but just the whole point is just, like, they mostly don't have, like, a ton of choices. So if you were going to have one... You might as well just go with something that's going to be, you know, decent. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I think. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I usually go for the lighter, like not not light beer, but lighter beers, like uh, more like wheat beers, like you know, like I said, Blue Moon. So one, some some of my friends calls calls me a total pussy about it, and I get why. But it's whatever. Good beer is a good beer to me. Uh, there's a there's a brewery in town called Twenty First Amendment, uh, small independent brewery. They're really good. They got one called Hell or High Watermelon. It's basically um, it's basically, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically like bell. It's basically t- like tastes like a blue moon only it's, it's like made of watermelon. It only has more of a watermelon flavor to it than orange as opposed to blue moon would. Hmm. You won't notice it right off the bat, but if you kind of look for it and it kind of lingers like, Oh, there it is. That's really good. And they sell it around the summertime and that's really good. So huh. I know how fruity that sounds literally, but look at my watermelon beer. I know how it sounds, but fuck, it was good. It was good. Okay. Who doesn't like watermelon? Like, what? Is people out there going to say, like, fuck watermelon. There's some folks out there that probably feel that way. Yeah. Yes. They're bad people, though. I know, because watermelon's good. Well, I got a little bit of something right here. Um, what other stories you get? This ain't a story. I'm not going to lie. Um, I kind of start after looking for that, uh, after looking for, like, you know, just miscellaneous jobs here and there. I just like oh, I'm gonna look up for I'm gonna look some shit up for the podcast. When you go looking, you don't find a whole lot. Like I was looking for something. I, I was just looking for you know gold, but I, I just I couldn't really find anything. I you can go like people seeking people, but like I said, it's nothing like too creative. Just like oh yeah, I'll blow a load in my face, haha. <laughs> you know, just listing these things down. That's just gonna get old very quickly. But I found something else right here. Hmm. Something else, and it's actually not too far away from uh, from our, our neck of the woods. Actually, Batman it's on Craigslist. It's on Craigslist, and I looked them up. They have a fund me and all that. Batman based self defense. Huh, that's pretty badass. Now, where's that at? Now, let me click on this. All right, it's gonna take us right over. They have a uh, they have a YouTube page as well as a GoFundMe. Their actual group is called. California Combatives Club on their GoFundMe. Their YouTube page, California, uh, California Combatives 209. They're stationed in Modesto. Huh, so yeah, definitely not that far away. Yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit of a... Give me the rundown on what it's like. It's, I hopefully hope it's not one of those ones where just like, slap Batman on there. That would bring people in. Because that, that would bring me and you in, and then if there wasn't enough Batman on the first day, we'd be probably like, leave. Well, I'm not going to lie. When I first read this, I was kind of looking, going in like, oh, something to make fun of, something to be negative about. Then I was like, oh, I can't do this. The, who, the, who the fuck am I to judge? Like, I'm sitting here drinking a beer like, oh, they're achieving their dreams. Look at them. <laughs> then I was more as reading. I'm like, oh, well, good for these guys, you know? Well, no, so, no, I, I'm not saying anything like down against it, though. But just sometimes there's that thing where people slap a title on there. And then you get there expecting to get some Batman-like moves. And then you realize it's just like, oh, you just slapped that in there to sell your self-defense class. Well, I'll... Uh, I'll uh, read it to you and you could be the judge sounds good 
After growing up reading and watching comic book heroes, I decided I wanted to become one through martial arts training. I was hooked from day one. Now, I want to teach others to channel their inner Captain America or James Bond. I make minimum wage, so it's barely enough to buy new boxing gloves and kicking pads. But God willing, with a startup, I can raise funds to light the bat signal. Just like in the X-Men's Danger Room or the Batcave equipment gets damaged, you need to get repairs and replaced. The funds will go to weapon supplies, hand wraps, first aid kits, quality boxing equipment and shields, down payment to rental space in a gym dojo. CCC also believes every crime fighter should have a uniform. The funds from the start <clears throat> from the startup will go to cover fees to design the ship. Oh, design and ship the t-shirts show rank and class. I'm glad you read this today and appreciate any help you can give us to uh, follow your geek achieving dream. And this was on Craigslist? This was on Craigslist, yeah. That sounds weird. It sounds like a Kickstarter project or something like that. Well, I did. That was it. There's a link to their Kickstarter page. Oh, okay. So they're just advertising it on there. Huh. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like a cool idea. It sounds like, you know, Kickstarter projects can kind of go in all kinds of directions. Like. They can be a startup for something really sweet, or they can just be some dude who kind of wants money for an idea that sounds cool, but you're kind of like, is this going to pan off? Does this guy really have the skill to be teaching this, or does he just really want to learn himself? No, yeah, yeah, I feel that way, uh, too. I Mold went down for dreams and stuff, but... I went and looked him up, and they basically... I looked up their YouTube page, basically just... Fo uh, just basically uh, them, just different, like, short videos of them, like, just training, boxing, and... What not? At one point, there's a guy dressed like a Viking hitting a punching bag. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no point when they're like up on top of like the fucking double tree in Modesto and they're gonna like swing off from it, are they? There's a link here: Court of Owls bladed boxing. It's a minute and thirty-seven, so that you could tell they actually know their shit. Because Court of Owls is a very that very narrows it down, right? See so right here, and they got an image of like a great Capula image of the Court of Owls. Now they're going in and showing different like training techniques. I guess. They're trying to. They're going off the. I guess they're going. They're combining what they know of martial arts. I'm watching one of them right now. They're combining what they know of martial arts, like just real, with uh, like real like technique, with the visual images of how like they see the characters do. Because I'm watching the way this guy's fighting with these foam knives right now, and he kind of holds them the same way, but it looks like he's kind of mixing in some Muay Thai with it a little bit. Huh. Well, that's it. Sounds like an interesting idea. I'm. I'm not, not putting the person down. I hopefully hope it works out really well for you. I hope it's, you know, it would be awesome. How awesome would it be if we get our first, like, you know, real-life Justice League stationed in Modesto, of all places? <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> Fucking, they can hang out on top of the Devil Tree because it's the tallest building in Modesto. <laughs> like, there, like, there's the George Lucas, like, the George Lucas statue right there. Just, like, it shines like a light out of its eyes of, like, you know, like, CCC, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Interesting concept. Interesting that it's in Modesto, but uh, I don't know. Well, there's probably a bunch of guys that fucking hang out Bonanza all day long. Yeah, I guarantee you. I probably passed because whenever I go to Modesto, I always go to Bonanza. I've probably walked right past these guys right at Bonanza Comics. Exactly. I, I feel like if I went there, I probably have seen them before. Yeah, Even if you I don't probably, remember them. Probably have, and you know, I, I'm watching it. I mean, they're they're younger guys, look around our age. Uh, they look like they know their shit as far as like martial arts go, so don't want to talk too much shit on them. Otherwise, they could probably find us and get, kick my ass. But beyond that, though, um, all the they'll time, find you at fucking Bonanza one day. <laughs> they just hear my voice like that's the one. Get him. <laughs> Heroes don't act that way. Like, well, my favorite superhero is the fucking Punisher. Like, oh shit. <laughs> well, why am I tied up and in the back alley now? He's got a gun to you my head. You guys said Batman. Well, because Batman sells, bitch. <laughs> Don't you fucking know? Why do you use Batman? Because he sells. We fucking thought. Now open your fucking mouth. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. He's going to put his fucking dick in my mouth. <laughs> no, I was thinking it was going to be a grenade. But, okay, we'll, we'll go with that, too. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, and the guy's just there. They're like, dude, I'm not going to put my I'm not putting my fucking dick in your mouth. Why is that the first thing that comes to your mind? He's like, I don't know. I'm tied up. <laughs> I'm tied up. I live in San Francisco. It's just what I assumed. <laughs> Castro is like a 30 minute walk from where I live I just assume that's what she wanted to do I'm sorry 
Why does it happen? Every single time we kidnap someone, we tie them up, we tell them to open their mouth. They think it's a dick. They never think it's the grenade I'm holding in my hand. I, I don't know. It's just... Yeah, it's, like, it's the go-to, I guess. Yeah, you know, why, why, why? You know, you're tied up, you're on your knees, you know, it's just bound to happen. I got a grenade in my hand. Yeah, I don't know. The, it's for show. It looks like a prop, you know. Maybe, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, like, like like a pocket knife, like that thing that's in, like, fucking Last Action Hero. <laughs> yeah, so these guys, they got uh, just a reminder, if you want to go check them out, giving these dudes a shout-out, California Combatives Club. That's the name on their GoFundMe. And they also, uh, from their Craigslist ad, they had one that led to their YouTube page, which I believe is California Combatives 209. So, yeah. Huh. All sorts of excitement there. Well, I really hope it pans out for these guys. No, I really, no, I, I, I really do, too. I really want there to be more of, like, you know, it'd be cool to actually get real-life superheroes at some point. I mean, I don't think that's what's going towards is real-life superheroes. It sounds like it's more just... Some like a variation of a gym, like you know, you you could go to a regular gym. Batman gym, you're going to the Batman gym. You know, and throw around weights, and you know, do some cardio or some boxing, or you could go here and put a costume on and work out. There you go. Why not? I think that's that's more what it is. I don't think it's like they're trying to start up like a superhero club, like they're gonna go fucking fight the crime of Modesto at night. I think it's more like they're trying to. Well, who knows? I mean, it, it leads up to that. You know, like. It started off as Project Fight. It started up as Fight Club, then worked its way to Project Mayhem. So who knows? That this may just be stage one. Yeah, you never know. Could so, could, could lead somewhere. No, but like, and it turns out these two main trainers are the same person all along, and they just didn't realize it. No, um, these right here though. It looks right now like it's a gym that's all superhero themed. Usually, whenever they show some of these footage of someone fighting, they're usually wearing a superhero T-shirt. At one point, one of the one of them uh, in, a, in a one one uh, video it was one dude literally wearing like a Batman shirt, and I'm not sure if it was just reflecting off something or if the shirt actually lit up like a blue light on his shirt, like a Batman symbol. No, they make shirts like that where they light up. I've seen them before. Okay, some, I believe that's somebody. What somebody I knew had an Iron Man one, and then like it lit up in the center. <laughs> Okay. Iron Man. We get a real superhero shirt. Oh, no. I mean, here's. I guess here's the thing. I mean, I'm not trying. I probably sound like just snobby fucking elitist, or which I don't want to be, but Iron Man, it's one of those things. No one gave a fuck about Iron Man until the movie came out. And, I mean, I understand why people like him, but it's like, I, I think more than anything, they like. They, I think people are more of a fan of Robert Downey Jr. than actual Iron Man, you know? I think so, that's true. Because, and, yeah, uh, literally nobody cared about Iron Man. Like, not even comic book fans really cared about Iron Man. Not saying there wasn't Iron Man fans, but he just wasn't, like, the most popular character. And whatever brings people joy, I'm not trying to, like, dismiss or take anything away from anybody, but whatever brings people joy, that's good. And, you know, as long as it's not hurting someone else or killing kittens, you know. But Iron Man, though, is just one of those things. I just think, I just can't help but feel oh, he's overrated. I don't know. I, I'm sure that there's, like... Someone could probably point out some comics that make him really seem really cool, really badass. Even the ones I read him in, it's like I understand some of his appeal, but I just he just feels overrated to me. He just always kind of has been. I know. I can agree with you there too. I'm I'm not like totally against Iron Man and like. The, the, I'll say this: the shirt was actually kind of cool, even though it reminds me of a shirt. If you wore that like in seventh grade, you just have people coming up and smacking you really hard in the chest. You're like, ow, the plastic's sticking into me. Yeah, they're giving you give you a real kind of like Jarvis core or whatever. Be <laughs> eventually would be shoved into you by the end of the day from everybody coming up and punching you in it. <laughs> this kid actually for the rest of his life just has this little like blue heart piece just shoved into his chest, like <laughs> <laughs> just for being punched in the chest. Becomes a real like real life supervillain. <laughs> but um. No. I always thought, like, if, when, if I start up my own gym, I would literally put, like, some posters of fucking, like, Wolverine, like, with, like, a shirt ripped off and all, like, you know, violent and muscular. Like, he's out in the woods. He just killed, like, a fucking bear or something like that. Because that would make me want to work out. You look at that, you're like, yeah, that's right. That's which you me. could be. Which you could be one day. You no, know? there's, like, that's better than some of the, one of the, some of the, uh, some of the posters they had at Class 5. Remember one, there's, like, Courage. And there's one of, like, the most... It had to be from, like, 1984, this poster. And it was the most stereotypical, like, 1980s ski douche, like, in bright pink, ski, like, ski clothes and blue puffy jacket, like, skiing over the camera, looking Sunglasses down. Sunglasses, looking down, giving a smile. Fucking, like, like, like the 80s pompadour. 
with a big fake tan, just kind of with this, ha ha, you know, kind of like, you'll never be me, loser, you know. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Jim's always picked, like, they never put the right posters into them. I think it's that thing, like, so many of them are trying to appeal to, like, everybody. And when you appeal to everybody, you mostly just lose. It's like, well, there's that, an that, Arnold poster that's the... in there somewhere, wasn't there? Wasn't there an Arnold poster in there somewhere? Yeah, it's at my house. <laughs> no, like, no, like, oh, well, wasn't it wasn't originally a class five? Yeah, then, like, the frame broke on there or something like that. Oh, okay, that's how that got there. But um, it's one of those things, like, it's, like, people always are trying to appeal to, like, it's, like, we need to appeal, like, at a gym, they're, like, we need to appeal to the senior citizens, you know, the teenage girls, the teenage boys, the middle-aged men, middle-aged women, and it's just, like, you know, kids and so on. It's just, like, you, you really got to, like, when you have a gym, unless it's, like, a humongous one or something like that, you got to go, like, well, who are, we, who are we appealing to? Are we going to go for bodybuilders? general fitness, you know, or the elderly. That, that's kind of like what it breaks down to. Or we can have one of those, like, social club gyms where it's like people aren't really there to work out. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I'll be honest. Um, oh, go ahead. Cut you off. So I was going to say, like, it's like I like to see gyms when they're more appealed to, like, bodybuilders. So, like, you know, everybody in there is, like, they're not there to chit-chat. They're not there to, like, you know, tell you about the past. They're just there to work out you know, lift some weight, you know, and have some respect. And that's about it. And that's the bottom line. So in the gym like that, you could throw up these kind of posters of like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, fucking Franco Colombo, Batman, Superman, fucking lifting weights and shit. Hulk, 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 Hulk Lou Ferrigno? <laughs> yeah, why not? Like, that's what I do. If I had a gym, I would throw up all classic bodybuilders. I would throw up some actors on there, you know, put like Brad Pitt and Troy and shit. And then I'd have like, you know, Wolverine, um, Batman... Fucking, yeah, I don't know, you know, Nightwing, Flash, you put that next to the treadmills. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the thing. They, they shame you, they shame you. They have, like, this, over at the snack counter, they have a picture of that we the use. Blob. Like, no, no, the, we can use the blob. <laughs> we can use that one sad, fat guy with his gut hanging over, looking sad, looking down, like. You, it, was, like there was, it. it was the photo reference. You used the photo reference for it in the last Drunk Batman cartoon. Yeah, and then it was in uh, Drunk, or is it? It was in the Batman, like, uh, the, with the Pet. Oh, it, it was, was the election, election, election video. It's the election video or the Gigapet one? I don't remember. Uh, which our, one. our miscellaneous, like, Batman videos where it's just Batman talking about something. Yeah. I actually like Whatever, those ones. Batman I, I, I kind of miss those ones. They were really easy to do. I wish we did more of them. Well, I guess we could still do more. It's not like we can't. Like, like that was in the past. Too bad that, that our Bat Cave burnt down and we can't go back there anymore. <laughs> Well, the bat suit's back in like uh, my folks' basement, back back in Sonora. But actually, kind of reminds me that when I, last time I was there, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Last time I was there, um, my dad's like, "Hey, you want to go take out any uh, any shit you don't want?" Like, well, I uh, well, I, I okay, okay, I'll take this, I'll take this. And there's some stuff there, like some old like paintings and like the stack of just art stuff I did, like stuff that I assume parents want to hold on to, you know. And um, now, I was this stuff you did as a kid. Uh, it's stuff from like high school and like through part of college. Oh, okay, so it's fairly. It's not like I guess. I think parents don't find things nearly as memorable ones. It's kind of past that you're like twelve or ten. Probably. So then I say to him like, like he's like, you don't want that? Like, no, I thought you guys. I, I thought you guys would want it. Like, why would I want that shit? Like, I don't. I don't know. Like, <laughs> memories. Or, I don't fucking want it. <laughs> like, okay, Dad, I'll I'll get rid of it. I didn't fucking paint it. <laughs> <laughs> did you paint this when you're six no then i don't fucking care <laughs> yeah i was like you're only like, special till you're 10 and after that then you're just kind of a hassle a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> where were your last where were your birthday card when you were 12 it's like are you old enough to move out yet <laughs> quit hogging the mashed potatoes boy <laughs> no i'm actually on pretty good terms with my folks but no um i just thought that was funny i was like I don't know. I thought you guys would want it for like personal like memories and all that kind of shit. Like, no, I don't fucking want it. We got enough of that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, then you, next thing you know, your dad's throwing it like a bonfire. <laughs> Cracking a beer open. Well, I've been waiting for that for a while, you know. I thought he'd never get rid of these pictures. Throws all the Pokemon cards and whatnot hidden in the basement down there, too. <laughs> you were like, no, dad, that's my retirement fund. <laughs> Well, now it's fire timber. That's kind of the last thing parents want to hear sometimes is when you tell them, like, you, you, the Pokemon cards are your retirement fund. Like, it's like my 401k right there. <laughs> I've been investing in this thing for years. 
there was what was it? There was the um, ah oh, shit. What was it? Uh, there's Beanie Babies, and they had actually around like when Beanie Babies came out, uh, people were buying them up like crazy because somebody put out a book saying they believe, given how much, how many, uh, how many of these things they make and whatever, the Beanie Babies will be worth X amount of dollars this much down the line. So you had families that full on just like spent most of their savings into Beanie Babies thinking, okay, we'll buy 2013, 14, and 15. These ones will be worth a fuck ton of money and we'll be, we'll be set. And, uh, yeah, they didn't really go up in price. There were some they just assumed, but because like somebody who wrote a book, who I guess had a, I don't know, like a, a PhD in Beanie, BB, uh, Beanie Babyology or whatever, came out and said, oh yeah, well, uh, that's just kind of a number we just made up or guesstimated. So yeah, these things really ain't worth shit right now. Because even then though, you still got to find a buyer for like, who wants to pay like $900 for a stuffed animal, which I'm sure they're out there, but not as many as you probably hope for. <laughs> Well, the one thing, the 90s was just the time period where everybody started getting into collecting because I think that was right when they started, like, selling some old comics. And people were like, what? That shit's fucking worth money? So that then next thing you know, that's why that's why comic books sold, like, ten times more in the 90s than they do, like, now, which you think of comics being more popular. But in the 90s, people were buying them because they were all thinking this was, like, investment. So they went out and bought the first issue of Death of Superman, and then next thing you know, when they sell a million and a half, they're not worth anything. Mm-hmm, exactly. You know, and the same thing happened with action figures, and then as that kind of came along, we had Pokemon cards, and then we started having Beanie Babies. And the thing about, I'll say about Beanie Babies, some investments, you got to give them like 50 years, because you just got to wait, because each year, more and more of them get destroyed by, you know, water damage, people throwing them out, kids, you know, chewing on them, dogs playing with them, mm-hmm. so on. I like how the kids are the ones chewing on them, and the dogs are the ones playing with them. But, <laughs> so over time, then the stock goes down on those. And then next thing you know, in 50 years, having a mint fucking Beanie Baby collection, you might have some money there. You know what I mean? Just a little. Just a little. Yeah. You, you never know. You never know. Just might. You might. No, I, I mean, given the right, given the right, uh, I think it, you just got to find a buyer first. I think it's just kind of like, oh, I have an Action Comics number one. That's amazing. Do you have a buyer? Well, no. You know, I think yeah, I think it's a matter of just finding someone who's willing to throw down that kind of money. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can find them, but you just got to look in the right spot, you know. Well, it's kind of like Pokemon cards are actually worth quite a bit still. Like they their are? Value, yeah, they're not worth like, like, you know, everybody thought they're not, they weren't going to be worth anything. But you have a holographic Charizard first edition, you're still going to get some pretty big bucks for it. Mm, I can see I'm that not going to say I'm like, not, you know, like a fucking energy card or something's worth something, but... People are going cheap shit over like uh, English first edition holographic Charizard. I remember that. That's always been the prize possession. That's been like, you know, the holy grail of Pokemon cards almost. Mm-hmm. But um, what was the same? You know, the one thing that I think is the best investment, and I tell this to anybody, I'm like, this is a better investment than stocks. Is fucking action figures though. And now maybe not just any action figure, but when you buy kind of like the adult made action figures, the ones that are made to be kind of like statues more than anything else. But you know, like a lot- lot- or whatever. Yeah, but, like, those ones are, like, pretty much, like, you instantly have value with them. I mean, every rock star action figure I have from, like, Jim Morrison and Alice Cooper and, like, the Jimi Hendrix ones and so on, they all go up in price. I mean, the cheapest action figures I've got that are, like, maybe, like, 10 years old by now and they're only worth, like, a little bit, they're still worth, like, three times the amount that I paid for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of them are worth, like, five and ten times the amount I paid for them. I mean, if you could, if you had the money... And you just say, like, when the Jim Morrison ones came out and you went to the store and you just bought, like, 20 Jim Morrisons, you know, for 10 bucks a piece. Like, because that's all they cost back then. Now, actually, it's like $25 a piece. But you would have, you could sell those for a couple hundred dollars a piece each one right now. Give it another 10 years. Who knows? I don't know. Action figures is like, the, you pretty much can't really lose at it. Uh, right there. Uh, I, I, is, that, is that one of those things, like, because I, I see in your room, and I've seen all those like uh, collectible figures you have, just all the hard-to-find shit. Are you kind of holding on to those because you're just like, you know, like them so much? Like, I want to sell them, but I can't part with them just yet. Because you could probably almost fund, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, actually, I, don't, I really don't know what... what and I, I know you have a good handful of just, like, like you said, the rock star figures. Those ones right there, like, is it more of one of those things, like, you want to wait because you like him so much, just don't want to part with him yet? Or is it a little bit more of the, uh, is it a little bit more of just kind of like, ah, oh, you want to give it more time? Well, I'll so say this. Go up. I'll say this. I wouldn't sell mine unless I was, like, 
down and out, I guess. That's about that's mm-hmm. kind of like what I feel like why you hold on to some of these things. I was like, I'm going to look at my Gilgamesh figures and my fucking Jim Morrison one for as long as I possibly can. I mean, I, I don't have, like, a humongous collection. I just got, like, enough that I could probably... If I really needed money, I could probably go out and sell those for, like, I don't know, maybe $2,000 worth of action figures, you know, that I've kind of bought over the years. Mm-hmm. But till then, it's like, no, I'm just going to hold on to them. I, I, I like them. They're cool. It's like... It's sort of like video games. It's like, you know, every once in a while, I'll sell a couple of them just to kind of get something else, but... If I don't need the money, then I don't. The, I like the collecting part more than I like like the selling part. I'm not really always into it for a business, but every once in a while, when you need some money, you know, sometimes you go like you look at a game. And I'll look at something like I bought this like not too long ago. I saw it at the flea market a couple months ago. It was Mega Man Legends for PlayStation with the black label, pretty much mint condition. I paid three dollars for it. That game sells for like you know fifty to like seventy dollars sometimes on eBay, give or take on who's bidding and buying. And, you know, I was like, mm, I always kind of want to play Mega Man Legends, you know. Maybe I'll sit down and play it this time. And after a while, I was like, I think there was a game coming. I can't remember what I... Something was coming. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to play this. And if I ever do want to play this, I can just download the ROM of it, you know. it's that, that, That'll be fine. So I was like, okay, I'll sell it. And I, I think I got $55 for it or something like that. There so you it's go. like, bam. You know, paid 3 bucks, sold 55 eBay takes, you know, whatever, 7 bucks and whatnot. But, um... That was something I could kind of part with. You know, I've sold some games. There's always games that you kind of sell, and then later on you go, damn it, why the hell did I sell that one? You know? I had to sell some. I, when I, to, move up, to move here, I had to sell some of my comics for, like, a ridiculously cheap price. Like, roughly, like, something probably a little over 100 bucks worth for, like, 50 bucks. So, huh. yeah. Just to make, 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 make me lose some room and just for gas money, basically, you know? Yeah, it's like every once in a while you gotta kind of sell some things. Either like you sort of gotta thin out your collection at some point, unless you like live in a mansion where you can store everything, and you got some kind of fucking bat cave where you can store all your shit. But till that point, you just kind of go okay. Like and like for me, some of the video games I kind of look and I go like I like to have a collection on some things, but I don't like to have so much stuff. I don't want to be like this guy just like put it in the corner with the other ones. Like if I'm not gonna use it, sort of, I rather go. I rather sell it to somebody. I make a little. Be like bit of money. Ra- William Randolph Hearst. Like, no, yeah. Susan, just play with your puzzles. <laughs> but the way I look at it, it's like, if I, you know, if I'm not gonna play it or play with it, you know, play the game or whatnot, maybe somebody else should have it. I can get a little bit of money. They'll at least get some joy out of it. They'll be like, man, that fucking I won Mega Man Legends so bad. I can't wait to play this again. Blah 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 blah. So they get it, you know, and enjoy it. Where I just would have had it would have been like, yep, put it in the stack of the other PlayStation 1 games. Will you get to it? I like to assume I will, but I probably won't. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 like that you're, I like that you're admitting this because there's a bizarro version of you where you just got, like, your whole house is just filled with all these video games you're never going to play. Laura's coming up and saying, Spencer, we got to get out of the house once in a while. Like, no, Laura, we're fine here tonight. So many DVDs and PlayStation 1 games to play. You know? I, I have that fear that there will just be that point where I'm just like sitting. There's just a stack of comics on my left, a stack of DVDs on my right slash Blu-rays, and then this whole fucking pile of games in front of me, and I just go, there's no time. There's no time left. You're sitting on a throne made out of DVDs, basically. I know, pretty much. I'm like Scrooge McDuck, but it's just out of like a whole bunch of story goods. <laughs> you just jump in and you just like break most of the shit like oh fuck, oh, fuck. swim through it like <laughs> swim through a pile of dvd cases <laughs> but you know it's like i had this like big like, um beatles record collection that like it was it was pretty sweet it was on lp it had like all of them and it was in really nice condition they released it like in the 70s afterwards and you know i was like you know i got all the beatles records i already have them on kind of like lps from like my parents and they're kind of like they're a little bit worn out but they, they feel more like Okay, well, that, 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 I got them here still. And then I have all of them on CD and so on. It's like, are you ever going to listen to the LPs? No. So I was like, I needed, you know, I was, I was going to put it, invest it towards something. So I sold it for $500, a set of all 13 of them. It's like one of the few records oh, that's damn. actually worth a lot. Did you say $500? Yeah. Like, I actually oh, had shit. it up there for like 400 or something like that. And the guy's like, oh, he's like, I'll do, I'll do a buy it now right now for 500 bucks if you want to sell it. And I was like... Yes, that's more expen- That's more than everybody else has it up there for. So I was like, you know, that guy clearly wants it. Uh, unless he's one of those guys that's just going to, like, get it and go, like, Susan, or in the corner with the other one. So he's just got this <laughs> stack of, like, all these Beatles. Like, Beatles like, memorabilia. 
No, no, not just a memorabilia. Just this one blue box record set. Just stacked <laughs> in the corner. You know, and as well as once it was cool, but like I thought about it, I was like, you know, it just kind of sat there underneath like what the entertainment center by it, you know, kind of there. It's just like you pull it out once in a while, you looked at it, and it was cool. I'm not saying it wasn't cool, but it's like sometimes I kind of have that thing where I'm like, somebody should enjoy this. I, I shouldn't just be holding on to this like it's fucking like, you know, the ring in Lord of the Rings and I'm fucking Golem, you know, it's just like, he doesn't really fucking need that ring, you know what I mean? He, he should get out of that cave and do something with his life, but instead he's just <laughs> down there holding on to that ring. Not really. The Jim Morrison, it's my precious. The Jim Morrison's my precious. You know, no, no real purpose there. So I'm like, you know, you, you got to sign part of some of those things. Oh, yeah. There, kind of I, like, we've all seen like one or two episodes of Hoarders by this point, I think. And now I mean like a hoarders thing. Like that's that's a completely different thing. I'm more just talking yeah. about kind of really nice things you got. Like you see this a lot of times in people's houses. They got some real fucking nice shit and it's in storage. And you almost just want to go up and slap the fucking shit out of them because you're like, what the fuck's wrong with you? What the fuck <laughs> is wrong with you? Seriously, come on. Like you got some nice shit there. Either use it or give it to somebody who is going to use it. And don't be a cheap little fuck about it and try to get like retail price back for it. I hate when people do that. I, that's what's like always just bothered me is where people buy something. You'd see this at video games back in the day when like they originally had like mom pop stores that would take games in, you know, or even GameStop itself. Even though GameStop's always been cheap, but somebody will buy a game for like for fifty bucks, brand new, like it's a PS2 game, and then they'll try to take it in like a year later and go like, they gotta be like, well, I'll give you, I'll give you like fifteen bucks for that game because the game's dropped the price. You probably could buy it for twenty five dollars, brand new now. And the girl's like, well, well, well I, paid 50. I, I paid 50 bucks for it, so I should get, like, $49 so it's used. And it's just like, no, the price goes down. And unless you bought a really rare game where the price goes back up, then you you're just not going to get that. Like, a lot of people just don't get that concept that, like... A lot of people don't understand basic economics. Well, sort of like that thing. Like, one thing always bothers me at GameStop, and I want to slap the fucking shit out of people when they do this, is, like, when you go there and you're like, okay, this game's new, and then you go up to get it, and then they just, like, slap the case open and slap the game in there and give it to you. It's like... That's not fucking new. The second you break that seal, all I have to do is take a pocket knife, stab the seal once. It's not new anymore. I don't, mm -hmm. You don't have to touch the inside of it. All you got to do is break the seal, and it's not new. No, I'm I sorry. don't like that either. That pisses it me off. It literally needs to be about ten dollars less now, just because you broke the seal. Fuck that you like just that you just I, I just know. Well, you just hate going to GameStop in general because whenever you go in there, somebody has to tr try and make conversation with you. Who does? Yeah, who's just a moron? Even though I will say, there's always a couple people that are good people, so I'm not gonna put those people down. But there's enough bad there that like you know ruins the whole experience. Well, it's, it's well, a horrible experience. Means... It's like it's literally like it's like your country being invaded, you know. <laughs> and you used to have these really sweet stores that you know your townsfolk had. Is America now... complaining about what it's like that if our country was invaded? It is, it is, because you know what, goddamn right, America's supposed to be about fucking small business and mom-and-pop stores and American-like lifestyle of having the American dream. And a corporation is the anti-American dream now, because what that is is one person's fucking dream invading everybody else's dream for their own fucking pleasure. You go up to, like, some Baghdad resident, like, I understand your pain. We are the same. <laughs> we have a games up in our town. It ruined many <laughs> lives. <laughs> Believe me, there, there used to be a time when you had the choice of over 15 game stores and rental shops. Those times have passed. You know, you understand, right? Yeah, you know. Like I, I see, you got Baghdad game stuff right here. Horrible. Why, why, why are you ticking? Why are you giving me that look and why are you ticking? <laughs> I know, you're angry too. I feel that way too. My heart ticks when I get angry. <laughs> it's the passion building inside of me. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> then the guy walks in, then the guy's like, he's like, I do understand you. He walks in the GameStop Baghdad and just blows it up. <laughs> he was like, oh man, good, good man right there. Why don't we have uh, more like that in the world? <laughs> oh, that was insensitive. Oh. Not as GameStop. <laughs> not not <laughs> as GameStop. Speaking of GameStop, like last time I was in um, Sonora, I actually rolled in GameStop for a minute. Because it's the, it, got a fucking monopoly and there's no other choice unless you want to buy online and wait sometimes. Well, it made me sad because last time I was in Sonora, you weren't there. So, uh, and, like other friends of mine at the time were busy. So, like I realize, even though I even though I love Tuolumne County, I kind of realize how like sad and kind of dull it is when like my few friends who still live there 
are busy or when you're not there, you know? So I was just like, what am I going to go do? You know? So I went to GameStop. Like, this is just depressing. This is a very depressing day. And I went to GameStop though. And you know, like you were talking about how people like to go in there and sometimes certain people like the very, very, very dedicated worker will go up and start trying to make small talk with you. Yeah. Well, I don't consider that the dedicated worker. I consider that the bad worker that doesn't well, know their t- fucking t- place. They think they got to or whatever, or like corporate. They don't just, told, yeah, like the that, corporate told them that they'd get fired if they didn't do this. But you know, a true American said they, they know what to do. What to do? It's right. Just because Mister Fucking Moneybag comes up to you and says, "You know what? Well, I want you to like dick around with these, you know, customers coming in here and upsell them on a fucking Halo statue that they don't want, but they do want it." Well, now I reach the point where if I do go in there and somebody starts like, "Hey, so what games have you been playing lately?" What uh? What DLC are you looking for? Oh, can I help you with anything else? Anytime that starts to happen, I don't. We're like, no, I'm done. Leave me alone. I don't do that. I actually, I actually just kind of engage them with equal enthusiasm. Like, hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm playing this game. What game are you playing? You know, just with the same amount of enthusiasm, and that scares them off. They make it really. What? I feel like that'd work on some of them. I feel I have this fear though that that's going to engage a super conversation. I don't know if I can. Not if you. Or if like, I want to even handle that. Not if you could like match their like false enthusiasm. You know, <laughs> just like look at them like all smiley, happy, like you know, doe eyed with like no like with no like sign of a soul. Like I'm doing good today. Have you played this game? You know, just if they ask you a question about like. What game have you been playing? You quickly respond with like, "I've been playing this." What about you? Have you played this one? You know. See, so, yeah, I've just, just gotten very so fed up with it. Eager, and they will kind of just go back. They'll go back behind the counter and not talk to you unless you are unless you have a question for them. I've also learned that if you just kind of give them the cold shoulder, they go away too. Like, you know, because they're they're not real people in their game stuff. <laughs> They're, they're, they're not like me or you or everybody out out there in like Radio Land. These people here have sold their soul to the GameStop devil, so they oh. can take whatever heat they get. And you know what? That's their fault. Are unless they're the, unless they're the few, because every GameStop's entitled to a couple good employees. You know, and I'm I'm going to defend those guys. But we all know that 75 percent of those employees are horrible, evil people that we should not have to deal with on a daily basis. But God damn it, they're there to ruin our lives. Are they all one person? Like, they all share a soul if they're in that building together? No, the worst part, they're a bunch so, of multiple people. If you, like, if, like, you say that, if you, like, ask them a question, they all in unison be like, you know, um, be like, pre-order, Last of Us DLC, day one, you know? We're going to take a quick break right here. But now a word from our buddies at Paint It Black Podcast. Take a listen. I'm Pete, that's Brian. Yeah. There's Lou. We are Painted Black Podcast. We are Painted Black Comics. If you could describe the show, what would you describe it? Horribly offensive. Balls to the walls. A good time. I don't know. All all professional? (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised if fucking Barney heard some some screaming from next door. Hey, yo, Fred, I got uh, kicked out of the house. Uh, Can I stay with you guys for a little bit? No, Barney. (laughs) We're not friends like that. You better go stay with the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> dum dum, you should have said yes to your wife. <laughs> Can you imagine what Disney World would have been like had he lived longer? Uh, no juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the primary difference. Yeah. I feel like he funded the Nazis in some way. I, don't, I can't prove it. The what? first fucking model of their helmet had ears on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the basket's ears are coming over the hill. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Your son sounds like a renaissance painter. He was a fifth ninja turtle. He wasn't right in the head. They didn't really bring him out too much. <laughs> I'd like to fight the foot. <laughs> That's probably why they had a little stupid ass toppings. Bubble like, gum. Fuck, who let those sons order the pizza? I want to think bug. <laughs> <laughs> who put Legos on this shit? <laughs> Can I give you money for, for sex? I would enjoy you <laughs> making a transaction for a blowjob. Yeah. Can I get a receipt with that pussy? Oh, yeah. How do I follow this? Do you wash those briefs with starch? (laughs) Make that booty clap. Why don't you? (laughs) Let's hear uh, Randy Newman doing the song for Pompeii. (laughs) Oh, he's on the spot. Whoa, did smoke. (laughs) Volcano. 
<laughs> Things like GameStop and even Blockbuster is like the other like horrible business of this. It's like it's what ruined the fun of shopping. You remember when shopping used to be kind of fun? Like you would go to you're know, like, oh sweet, I'm gonna go to this town. I'm gonna look for all these like mom well, and pop video game stores <laughs> and like video stores and so on. And those well, days are like so gone. Especially since we grew up in the '90s, though. To top that off. Well, yeah, well, the 90s was, like, the pinnacle of that period where, like, I remember, like, opening up the phone book when you go to Newtown. Like, you go to Modesto, and they used to have, like, 15 different stores you could go to that were all fucking badass. And now we're stuck. The only thing we got left is Bonanza. Every other good store is pretty much gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's, it's such a shame, you know? And I think about that even, like, even in Sonora, it's, like, in that uh, whole Tuolumne County region, there used to be, like, 15 different video stores you could go to and get video games and movies and shit and fucking... Each one was different. It was not the same. It wasn't fucking corporate. I remember... I'm not sure if we said this on the podcast. Remember one time you actually met the mayor of Sonora and uh, you actually talked to the guy and he, he said he was the one that okayed all these major companies coming in to, uh, to, to Tuolumne County and, like, setting up shop, like Walmart... Uh, all, all the Alberts, all the all the corporate, because they're like, bro, well, because people were going to Modesto and spending their money, which meant that Modesto got the tax money that Sonora should be getting. So by bringing in the corporations, you <laughs> fuck the town over. I see how it is. You know what, fucking little Susie shop down there. Guess what? She doesn't have a fucking home to go back to because she can't pay her bills. You know why? Because her business closed, and that's why we can't go down there and buy fucking comics. And I'm not too sure if that's really her name, but I'm just gonna say that's her <laughs> little name. Susie. It's actually Susie. my name. Actually, my name is Frank. It, was, it wasn't even called Little Susie's. It was called Frank's Treasure Chest. So and I'm 77 years old, but uh, sure, Little Little Susie will work. <laughs> you know, so it's just like I, I remember that. I remember that mayor guy because I, I met him. I met him right before he went to go interview him for like some kind of like some kind of like journalism project of some kind. Uh huh. And. And I remember he almost just had this aura about him, like, "Hello, I am the mayor of Sonora." Who's going to suck my dick? Literally. That's what he was like. He was just, he was a guy who, like, I didn't even think he was from Sonora. I think he was just there to fuck Sonora over. That was his whole mission. You know what? And that's why other towns, like, Angels, all people are out there like, who the fuck is, what is Sonora and what is Angels Camp? Like, why are you talking about towns that have a population less than 5,000? <laughs> oh, Sonora, right? Would you like to suck my dick today? <laughs> I fucked over this whole town. Might as well finish, might as well get finished up, right? Yeah, just bend over and take it, little boy. Ah, oh, yes. Get some capitalism in you. <laughs> uh, I know. It, it's just sad. Like, you know, sometimes it's like you don't want to think about it because, you know, it just brings you down. But then at some point, you, you just go, remember the 90s when life was great and smut? Because it makes it okay. You know? But just remember, you remember the 90s when it was, like, bright out and everything was a good day and there were so many places to go and so much adventure and excitement and how that just doesn't exist anymore? This is why we have kids nowadays that sit at home and fucking watch people playing video games online and they're not playing themselves because you know why they don't get these 90s experiences of going to sweet arcades and having 15 fucking video stores and video game stores to choose from you know what and having a comic book store on every corner you know what god damn it america's just not the same anymore uh there's this what was it this is going to seem very off topic for a minute but i just kind of like the phrasing right here um c lab 2021 there's one time they had like a fake they had a fake ad on there like Captain Murphy have like an onion farm. He says like, "I'm Captain Murphy, mm -hmm. and I like onions because they're good, the way America used to taste." <laughs> I so remember like, that one. <laughs> a lot of people bitching about onions, saying they make them cry. They don't taste good. Well, I'm here to tell you to shut the hell up. You eat your damn onions. And all of a sudden, like this, like twenty-something Asian girl, like in like, uh, like almost like a slave lay outfit, walks out holding a plate of onions. She's like, "This is my wife." It's like Captain Murphy's onions. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, capitalism just makes me angry. Well, this ain't about capitalism, but we got a little bit of time left on this show, and. That's true. We, we, we got even more fun stories to tell about funny things that happened in the past that were grand in certain now, this ways is, and creepy and this scary is in other ways. This kind of happened. I'm surprised it took us this long to happen, but on top of it, I guess it was a matter of you didn't want to expunge this person's personal identity as well as um, you didn't really want to... I don't, I don't know. I guess it was all about that. But on top of that, when you kind of look at this particular guy, 
he's showing no quarrel about hiding these certain aspects of his life. And on top of... Yet we never knew really anything personal about him. We don't even know his real name. Nor do we... Well, we do know where he's from. Which that's... And all right, thing. so short and simple. Well, actually, no, it's gonna be a little bit of a story. But we always wanted to talk about this. Like, is it time? It's like, well, we've been doing the th- podcast for almost three years now, so it's time. So before we even did the podcast, uh, if you know, you probably know by this point. We mentioned it several times in this episode. Spencer and I do drunk these drunk Batman videos. Uh, earlier ones were live action, and that's what we did the audio commentary on episode fifty two. Was our live action movie. The first ones, though, were action figure ones that were really bad. Bad. (laughs) Funny (laughs) moments, maybe, in them. I'm not going to lie. I think there are some funny moments, but very, very poor production quality. But, you know, they they, they were a starting ground. They were late high school. Those were late high school, and um, they were... uh, they were, they were late, late high school, and we were trying to do a robot chicken thing. And it was literally like, let's try and do stop motion animation with your camera, which A, we didn't have the proper camera. B, we just kind of went in there, just like after like two minutes of attempting it to be sort of like stop motion, like, yeah, this isn't panning out. Fuck it. Let's just like keep our hands out of the frame. We we're trying to do a robot chicken thing. Now, this was like high school. We made Oh, this is the part where it's less, like, remember like that when we did that other class project and we used fucking fishing line? Yeah, that worked out pretty well. Let's just do that again. Yeah, exactly. That's what it came to. So um, eventually we just said, well, we like Dark Knight was about to come out and we said, well, you know what? Since since uh, we, you know, we had the concept for Drunk Batman because that Patton Oswalt joke, I always liked that Patton Oswalt joke where he's like, oh, well, what if Batman was like played by Nick Nolte and he was like an alcoholic? And that's that was kind of the foreground. And we just kind of took it from there. I had a little bit of Homer Simpson as well as other stuff. And um, you told me that the, 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 the Batman videos, the Batman action figure videos skyrocketed because Dark Knight was coming out. So we figured, all right, might as well make another one. But we didn't want to do the action figure things. Like, well, let's amp it up. Let's do the live action one. So that's what we did. And we, we did it. And it didn't really didn't really light the world on fire, take off like we hoped it would. But it still, you know, it's kind of like, I guess if there's one thing we're probably known for up to that point, it was probably that. Now I'd say it's probably the podcast. But it's... So what ends up happening is we make this video. Uh, it you know it's not really huge, but people who like it, people who saw it, generally like it for the most part. You get a, there's a few negative comments on there. Yeah, there's negative comments on everybody's videos. Yeah, but it's the internet. What are you gonna do? But then we get this one guy, this one guy who is a big fan, in like a very big way. Real big fan. What's his name, Spencer? Well, his pen name is Blue Soul Jim. Mm-hmm. Blue Soul Jam was this dude's name. And what happened was, first he leaves a comment to the effect of kind of like, oh, great video, guys. Awesome. Uh, whatever. And then at some point he's just like, Spencer's hot legs. Because, you know. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're jumping way into this. You're, okay. you're not, you, you've got not a buildup going. No, he keeps it first. He's telling us, he's like, man, this, these videos are great. You know, it's like, oh, sweet. And then, you know, he puts a comment on the second part. Because this back in the day, this is YouTube before you could put like a half an hour on it at a time. So we had to break it up into like six parts. So it was really like six little mini videos. They added up to one kind of short movie. So on each one, he's leaving these comments. I mean, like he watched every single one of them. And it was just like, oh, sweet. This guy really likes it. Dude, he's like a super fan. You know, I mean, this is great. And this is the first time we really had somebody... Other than like our own friends or people we do in the real world where you'd be like, hey, dude, check out my video. And they'd be like, oh, that's fucking awesome. That's great. That's great. But it's kind of different there. When you finally get somebody, it's like, I've never met this person ever, not even online. But they like really like this video. That's fucking badass. So he was the first super fan we kind of had. And then, you know, after all these nice comments, then he starts doing the thing like, he's like, Robin's sexy legs. And then it's kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I play Robin. And the, my gimmick, if you've never seen the Drunk Batman thing, was like, I'm going to do it fucking Burt Ward style. I'm not going to wear any pants. Fucking speedo it up, and that's going to be my Robin costume with like some fucking military boots and whatnot. Let's make it kind of funny looking. What are you looking at? Like if somebody was going to be fucking watching you from behind? No, no. I was like, I, I brought another beer in here, and I was making sure it was still there. But, um... <laughs> so he starts leaving these comments, and at first it's just... Lucille like, Jamie's behind me! Shit! <laughs> He fucking appeared. Apparently, he was a ghost. I said his thing. He's, he's like, he's like. We said it like three times. Juice. They said it three times. He's fucking here. Bloody Mary. But um. So, 
he starts leaving these kind of weird, creepy, or not, not like, okay, I guess, yes, yeah, kind of creepy. I don't know how else to describe it. Fuck yeah, it was talk, fucking creepy. It was creepy. He starts leaving, the, leaving these comments, and at first it's kind of like, you're like, well, he's, he's like a super fan. We'll, we'll let it sort of slide at the moment. But then it got to a weirder point where it's like, he asked you if he could use a picture okay. of my legs as a profile picture for well, a fan site called Robin's Sexy Legs or something. So I was, right, well, I was becoming a, a mascot somehow. Now here's... Way. You're, you're jumping a little ahead. But even for me, it was kind of a little bit of progression. For me, it was a little bit of progression. What ended up happening was uh, this guy, then what he does is... <sighs> fuck. So he sends me... He says, like, hey, I'm a big fan of your... You probably don't... I'm not sure if you could tell. He didn't even have, like, an actual picture. It was just, like, a blank... Here's the fucked up thing. Here's the weird thing. He's still on Facebook, as far as I know. And he, like, he, he didn't even have any friends. But the first thing that popped up was, like, you know, people you may know. He was, people you may know, has zero friends. Blue Soul Jim. It's like, how the fuck, you know, how did Facebook put this, these two together? I don't get that. He had no picture, no friends. It's a people you may know. Blue Soul Gems, like, that is fucking creepy. Okay, whatever. And the guy sends me a request. Then he sends you a request. And by this point, because he started posting all this shit about like, your legs on each video. And we were just both kind of, like, had our phones out, like, you want to do it? Should we do it? I'm like, okay, I'll do it if you do it. Okay, we both accept it. You know, we'll... we'll, we'll we we'll... really went over this, like, like, should we fucking accept this friend request? I don't know. It's like, he's a big fan. And he, I mean... He has given us a lot of comments and given us good feedback, and he's you know boosting the ratings on YouTube. But at the same time, it's a little, 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 little bit creepy there, you know. I mean, like he is... might w he probably wants to saw your legs off and make a wind chime out of them. I don't know, but you know, it was just one of these things. And I'm being a little harsh on that aspect right there. But it was just like, okay, well, let's just maybe we're just being dicks. This guy's got his thing, whatever. Who the fuck are we to judge? We'll just all right, yeah, accept, accept. Later, the guy kind of slowly starts just making small talk and even being, you know, fairly tame about what he's into. I mean, he'll have he'll like posting on his own wall or whatever that, you know, like just legs of superheroes or whatever the fuck. Like, OK, good for you. I'm not going to judge. A lot of leg fetish. Yeah. Yeah. And then at some point um, sends me then at some point um, even goes as far as to like send me a message asking me, "Hey, is there a chance of you guys doing another live action drunk Batman?" Like, "Oh, well, we're doing this, we're doing that." Um, not real. I don't know if we are going to do another live action. We considered it, but we think we're just going to stick with animation. Like, "Oh, well, I got a script if you guys want to see it." Like, well, "Let's see where this goes." Okay, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Send us the script. Well, this is this is the first part he had this other idea. And then he wanted he wanted to play the Joker, just like everybody wants to play the Joker. Oh yeah, that's right. He wanted to play Joker. I forgot about everybody that. wants everybody who like likes our drunk Batman stuff and then wants to be in it. They always want to be the Joker. That's like the first thing. They, that's like the go to character. And then they always ask, "When are you going to do the Joker?" And we're just kind of like, I don't know. Batman's got a lot of things we could do before we even get close to the Joker. So fuck off. But if anybody's going to do a Joker, probably be me or you. <laughs> and that's the bottom it was line. Actually, it was actually going to be Wes. I mean, not, now it was going to be like animated, but we were actually talking to Wes about being Joker. Oh, yeah, and the live-action one. But, um, so this is, we, we actually had a script planned out for Batman, the, like the second live-action one. I think it was called Drunk Batman Forever or something like that. It was called, uh... Or Dark, the, the Drunk Knight Forever, I think is what it was. No, it was like, uh, The Drunk Knight Strikes Back, because the first one was Drunk Knight Returns. The second one, then, like, the Bat, then, then, uh, Frank Miller's, like, second, you know, venture into Batman. Well, I guess technically his third, but like the the, the sequel to uh, Dark Knight Returns was Dark Knight Strikes Back, so it was that. Yeah, the Drunk Knight Strikes Back. Was that what it was? Okay, so yeah, like, it was a working title. It was, probably would have changed. Yeah, so okay, we had that. Uh, maybe there's just a handful of different ones thrown up there, but uh, so we had like a story kind of worked out, like a partial one. You know, we had like a beginning. We really didn't have like a, we had sort of an end, but we weren't like totally sure what we we're gonna do because people were giving us like kind of random ideas too on top of it. But we we're like, we, we we got what we know what we're gonna do. Okay, don't worry about it. We had like a beginning, we had kind of an end, and we had moments in between. So as that went on, that kind of we shot about like a ten minutes of a beginning of it. That um, at some point I'm just gonna put I have it all and I'm just gonna put it together. We, we've, it's actually you can see parts of it in the fucking old man orange trailer because I put up a bunch of lost footage in a sense in there, which probably is confusing to anybody who's like looking for those videos because they don't exist. Mm -hmm. 
But um, at some point, I just want to put like the lost files up of that 10 minute scene because I have it all fucking edited together and really just ready to go. But I just, it's one of those ones like when you didn't kind of have the other next 10 minutes of it, whatever. But we'll just put a fucking disclaimer up one of these days and put it up. Fuck, we should do it soon because now I t- totally kind of forgot about it until we started talking. <laughs> and now that I'm thinking about it again, I haven't thought about it since I made that trailer. We got to fucking do this. I'll put it on my fucking checklist. So. Then we ended up not making the live action. We just somehow, some way, it just it didn't like pan out nearly as well. And this is when we started to progress into making animation because it got harder to make live action stuff. People were like screwing us over. It was hard to get actors to show up. Blah 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 blah. They're so like, what? What the fuck? Let's just try this animation thing. How hard can it be? You know. So we like kind of dicked around with fit, and then some point once it kind of clicked, it's like, okay, it's not amazing animation, but it works. So we started doing those. So, each, for we, so we made about two or three animations at this point. And Blue Soul Jim kept going, like, when are you going to do a next live action one? When are you going to do a next live action one? We're like, yeah, well, no, we're doing this animation thing right now. We kinda enjoy, we're kind of enjoying this and stuff. And then he sends the script. This is when we get the script. Because I know because it was after the Raven and Robin episode where, like, Batman, like, she asked what happens to, like, the cat or why is there so many Kevin Bacon collections and can we watch one? Mm-hmm. So it was after the story of why Robin doesn't wear pants. This is where we get the Blue Soul Jim one. Well, actually, for before that happens, I want to say he actually wanted us to go down to San Jose, where he lived, and actually film. He says, I'll hire you guys to come down here and film a live-action drunk Batman movie. Like, oh, um, thank you so much. Very flattered. But I don't know if we have the time or the money. Like, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I, I can pay you for it. It's like, well, I mean, chances are... Not to be this guy, it probably wouldn't be a whole lot. Might just pay for the gas ride down there and the way back. So, yeah, we'll just, if you want to send us a script or shoot us ideas, feel free. And the guy would even go go as far as, like, you know, on, like, my birthday, actually. He sent me, like, I think it was, like, a David Bowie music video or something. Nothing weird, just David, like, happy birthday, it's your birthday. Like, oh, thank you, even on Christmas, something like that as well. So I was like, all right, cool. I mean, he's a little off, but, you know, he's seems nice, but I... Okay, you know, from a distance, that's fine. Not not to seem judgmental or like a dick, but, you know, I just... When someone co- asks you don't know, I ask you to come all the way down to San Jose. By the way, I got a thing for Robin's legs. I'm just yeah, open about it, that. It might, you know, I think if there wasn't the Robin's legs and then the, the other obsession with other people's legs, <laughs> I think you would just kind of go, huh, well, that, that, okay, maybe, you, you'd almost maybe consider it, you know. But this is kind yeah. of still pre-Skype and things, so it's like you wouldn't really... You literally have to do it like fucking pin pal style. You wouldn't really know who the hell you're going to go see. Mm-hmm. So you would have been like, eh, I don't know. But it, maybe if there was no like weirdness, you maybe we might have considered it. I don't know. But I think it was the legs things what put it over the edge. I'll, I'll say that. That is literally what was crossing the line. Yeah. So, because I mean, like the idea of somebody paying us to do a drunk Batman too, like it sounds sweet. Like I mean, that, that that's pretty badass. Whether he's just paying for like you know some more you know video equipment, that's still pretty badass. But the leg thing was kind of a little weird. I could just see, like, a horror film. We just end up in this guy's leg slash, like, severed leg slash piss dungeon. <laughs> like, fucking single light stringing, like, flickering on and off, hanging down. He's, like, he's like dressed up like the fucking penguin. Dance, Robin, dance! You know? No, I, I had a feel we are going to be locked in, like, this room, and there was going to be a stage there, and we were going to have to put on drunk Batman fucking skits that he writes every night for his amusement. We'll just be up there doing plays of drunk Batman. The ground but, is lightly electrified if we, like, misstep or misdance, you know? Or miss, miss a line or so on. Yeah. So so that that was kind of, like, my fear right there is just, like, we'd be trapped in, like, Batman and Robin's outfits. We wouldn't be able to take them off. We'd have to, like, live in them. And then next <laughs> thing you know, we'd just be putting on these shows night after night after night after night for his amusement. He comes by, like, we're, like, in these fucking kennels. He's like, here's your chowder bucket. Like, just drops, like, a fucking bucket of, like, God knows what right into, like, of, like, mush right into the kennel. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, I just don't want to be here anymore. It's like Tusk times ten. He, like, yeah, shows he, us he into, shows the, us he into shows the Batman into the... and Robin costume. <laughs> <laughs> so, we get to the animations, and then he finally sends us a script. And he... Let's say this. He liked our Robin and um, with Raven and Batman one so much that he thought that Robin, Batman, and Raven should kind of have. Well, I'll just read it. Why tell you when I can read it? 
Okay. Think of it. I'll, I'll, I'll say this real quick before you start reading it. It actually is a little flattering, though. And I mean, I know this is just us. It's it's a parody on so- us parodying something else. But regardless, someone went and wrote a slash fan fiction of something we made. So, yeah. So, I mean, like, at, at the same time, it's, it's weird. It's this mixture of being, like, really flattered, yet partially creeped out all at the same time. And it's like, I don't, like, it's... it's I don't know how to exactly take it in, and I think that's the one thing. If there was no creep factor, you'd be like, "This is fucking amazing. Why can't we like you know be tons of fans like this?" But then there's once the little creep factor comes in, then you start to go, "Well, okay. Well, I'll just fucking read it to you." <laughs> okay, so here it is. Bye, Blue I read too, but it's all in your script, so it's on your screen. So yeah. So the title is "Hot Legs." <laughs> Original. I wonder what it's about. And it goes, late morning before noon, inside the fucking trailer, you know. I don't know if that implies that it's a trailer that's just a fucking trailer, or it's a trailer somebody's getting fucked Fuck, in. That, that means fuck shack, yeah. Yeah like, yeah, like a whack shack or something. <laughs> Robin was busy shaving his bare legs with his outfit on. Outfit's still on. That's also another thing that's kind of interesting. He had a thing for that. He always wanted the outfit on. The outfit's got to be on, for Christ's sakes. He was almost finished when suddenly, Hey, Robin, shouted a girl's voice from behind. And then he goes, yo! As he accidentally made a small cut in the skin of his thigh. Which, th- this was weird too, because it had like violence in it too, but like weird, like a shaving violence. Faint, a faint bit of violence right there, yeah. Then he turned around and saw it was his gothic superheroine girlfriend, Raven of the Teen Titans, who has just entered the trailer. The door was left open by, by mistake by Batman. Who left to take a walk through the forest? <laughs> What's Batman doing out in the forest? I just want to. Like, <laughs> I'm just out is... in the forest, drinking a beer, fucking a squirrel, just me in the forest. He's getting one with nature. It's just what he does. Yeah, I just I just, just whacking it in the forest, just something to do. Fuck you. We're adding a deleted. We're adding a deleted scene <laughs> to his fan fiction right here. Oh boy. Oh hey Robin, replied Robin. What are you doing? Asked Raven. I like how Raven's voice is like, there's a, Robin's voice, there's no way to out like high pitch that one. So everybody else sounds lower, but still. Shaving my legs, replied Robin. Don't want my legs to be hairy, huh? Raven, seeing the small cut bleeding from his leg, gasped. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. That's okay, said Robin. <laughs> As you're going, it says, Azeroth, Metreon, Xenos, shouted Raven with her magical power from her hand. Suddenly, the cut disappeared. I'm so oh, thank you, Raven, said Robin. And no razor bumps either. You know, so it's almost like we're getting an ad now for a commercial of, like, you know, shaving. Like, yeah, and you get no bumps either. It's great when you're shaving. Yeah. <laughs> As he went outside. Fan fiction ad advertisements at the same time. He was planning ahead. As he went outside for a water hose to wash off the way the remaining shaving cream from his bare legs, then went back in. Why is he going outside to wash from the hose? I'm not too sure. You know, you, so we can play this song in slow motion. There is just washing legs. Cause it, as well as one, there's a sink in a motorhome. You know what I mean? It's I, I mean I know it like you know kind of cramped area, but still. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get that morning dusk light shining in though. With that, like, 300-esque filter in slow-mo doing it, though. Well, quickly, pause that song before, like, we get fucked over on YouTube for that. Yeah. That's the only downfall. <laughs> you run those songs that they'll know, they'll know, and this episode will get blocked in many of countries. Oh, you you got to keep that in mind. Damn. You know, I, I know I, I know, other Such people do dance. that, but not everybody puts their episodes up on YouTube, so that's that's my only fear. I don't worry about it on other sites, but YouTube will, YouTube will fuck us over. My bad, my bad. They, yes, they have, so. Uh, they've done it before. Man, I was getting into it, too. With bare hands not wearing green gloves, he took one squirt of lotion and rubbed it all over his legs, smooth. Ah, there! Raven began to speak. So, Robin, you want to go to the dance club? Where's Batman? <laughs> the dance club. Gone fishing? Thank Christ. I like how they even used, he threw in some of our own lines. So, I, I mean, there's callbacks on here, you know. At the same time, as mm-hmm. weird and creepy it might be, I mean, like, as I said, it's that mixture of, like, I'm also flattered at the same time, too. Same here, same here. So then Raven goes, nice legs. Oh, thank you. I like boys with hairless legs. <laughs> yeah, I hate having hair on my legs. Really getting that across there. Really getting that across. You know, sometimes in life you think you're just putting on a costume. You don't realize that it's going to 
live with you. Almost. You're cha- you're 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 fulfilling someone's fantasy here. You're making someone's dream come true. Literally, there's a point where I, literally I'm, come true. I'm surprised Burt Ward didn't call me up and go, "Thank Christ that now the people are all off me on you now. I've been living this <laughs> fucking miserable dream for forty fucking years." You have no idea how many emails this guy sent me. <laughs> you're the fresh meat. Okay, Robin continues on. He goes, I don't care about not being allowed to wear pants. Fuck Batman. Actually, he didn't say fuck Batman. I thought that'd be fine to throw them there. I always keep my legs just as smooth and sexy as girls. Once again, getting kind of weird. You know? <laughs> a lot, a lot. It's whatever makes you get through the day. It's whatever you get through the day. It's not so It's not so much. I'm not judging him for that. It's just, we'll get into the things I'm more judging for later. But go I ahead. I guess this yeah. one's like, okay, I know that like it's, it's about Robin. It's not like he's ever used my name in there. But it's I'm playing the character. It's, you know what I mean? I mean, I guess it's one of those ones like, you know what somebody in a movie plays like a racist character and then people on the street are like, yo, why the fuck are you so racist? It'd be like, it was a character I was playing. It was a character I was playing. Like, well, this kind of reminds me of this. Like, why are your legs so sexy and smooth? It's like, it was a character I was playing. It's just, it was part of the outfit. I just wanted to go for a classic Batman. Batman 66, man. Like, that. No, that modern Batman where he's wearing pants. I thought it'd be funny. It's like, how about he's like, how about sixty six? How about Batman sixty nine? Like, oh no! <laughs> Open your mouth! Oh. No, it's it's a grenade. Like, oh, oh, I it's just, a grenade. I thought, oh, okay. I thought it was the. Why does everybody assume it's a dick? <laughs> For fuck's sake! I don't know. I don't know. It was like, that's just. What has this happened to you before? No, 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 no. I just, I, I assume it's just saying. My first time, I was kind of afraid that's what it might be. A, 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 a grenade actually really relieves me. I know that sounds weird, weird, but you know. Okay, we'll back to it. And then Robin, okay, after Robin says, I always keep my legs nice and smooth and sexy as a girl's, said Robin cheerfully. Unlike Batman, who's always hairy and masculine. Like, it's... it's... <laughs> said Robin with disgust. He, he did not like my guy. That He did, but clearly, like, we're sliding this. He's fucking off somewhere. Whatever, he's off the fucking screen. It makes me... He's off fishing fucking a fish at the same time. I don't give a fuck. Okay, cool, said Raven as she pulled her hood away from her face, revealing her pretty gothic pale face with purple bob cut hair and a diamond-shaped mole on her forehead. I mean, it gets, like, detailed here. He was going to, he was going to Teen Titans cartoon version of her. You want to see mine? <laughs> as Raven... Or this part, why not? Yeah. As Raven moved, moved away back... Move away back cape, that, that's all. So Raven moved away back cape that was in front of her, revealing her pale legs, fully bare in a nice black leotard with tilted chain belt around her waist, and purple shoes, no socks, just bare ankles. Like in Teen Titans cartoon series, not the comic. Really getting across, not the comic one. Robin, looking stunned and stricken by lightning, looks on with eyes, turn into a red heart shape, and drools slowly from his uh, O-shaped mouth. Okay, you know, once again, I drew the O-shaped mouth because it was simple and stuff, and now it's changed. So now fucking Robin has teeth and everything. I've moved along in animation. <laughs> I don't know if it had anything to do with that. It's come a long way. We've given him teeth. Still no pupils. <laughs> it's, no, because that was part of a joke. As Raven m- makes slow movement of her bright, hot, sexy, gorgeous-looking pale legs, Robin begins to sweat and shiver nervously as he falls on his knees and began to touch and feel all over her legs. <laughs> oh, man. This part's the weird. No, no, no. You know, actually, right here is the line where it kind of goes way over the line. Like fucking John Goodman came out and started going over the line, over the line. (laughs) His crotch began to bulge in his green hot pants. Whatever, whatever you say, it's not. Whatever joke I have, it's not as funny as what this. No, it's not as funny. The the script itself is just hilarious. It's at the same time. I'll say it's, it's flattering that somebody wrote like. Fan fiction that's, I guess, erotic fan fiction. I, I guess every starring you. Yeah, I mean, I, it's I, no matter what. I guess if you if you want to look in a positive way, at least people are thinking about you, even if it's in all the wrong reasons. But um, still, okay, back to the story. They were smooth and delicate. Robin's in heaven. Then he began to hug, fondle, kiss, lick, and bite all over. Until suddenly, a loud manly shout: "Hey, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> Here I come to fuck up the day." Literally, yeah, but make it even weirder. It was Batman, the drunk knight. The shout frightened Robin, and he accidentally bit off flesh from Raven's thigh. See, this is where it's got some weird, like, fucking, like, violent, like, porn stuff in here. Ow! Robin, or Raven screamed and quickly healed the large bleeding hole of her flesh. Uh, 
and the flesh of her leg with the Azareth, Metreon, Xenos, and then the wound disappeared. But Robin, with flesh still in mouth as blood trickled down his chin, looked on terrified. He slowly chewed it and swallowed it. She has a cannibalism mm. fetish too, that's great. Yeah, mm. delicious, thought Robin. <laughs> After healing her leg, Raven turned angrily at Batman with fire burning from her eyes as Batman just stood there, staring and dumbfounded. Never seen Raven revealing her legs before, Batman began to stare. His eyes turned to a heart shape and drool trickled down his face from his mouth to his unshaven face under the mask. Keep on going. Then Batman <coughs> made, a leap, made a leap forward at Raven's legs and start consuming with licking, biting, fondling, growling like a wild beast. So <laughs> Raven got more and more angry. Then she kicked Batman in the face, sending him flying across the trailer door and landed right into a tree. The end. <laughs> we should have done this for our Valentine's Day episode, man. It's almost so creepy and weird. I don't know. Fuck I, the Fifty but, Shades of Grey bullshit. We should have just, like, fucking made this. So the, the one fucking thing, Desperate Housewives made a fuck ton of money off it. The one thing I will say that's kind of weird is... we Then, like, later on, we made the Drunk Batman animated episode 5, which is, like, our highest rated... Or highest viewed episode of the animated ones. And it involved, like, some really weird stuff in it. Because we had a Robin and Raven sex scene in there, which... I mean, it was meant to be funny, but it's in there. I mean, Robin's bare-ass naked. He's slapping women left and right, being a total douchebag, and then... It's all blurred, though, luckily. It's, it's all blurred, blurred, yeah. But I remember, like, I remember when that episode kind of came out, I thought this in my mind, and he's like, and you guys didn't fucking do my script, but you did this one instead? Like, what the fuck? Even though... I mean, I, I could honestly say the whole thing about... This is, like, something he literally... This is literally what this dude wants to see. The idea with, with the scene we made... The idea with it, it's like it was kind of more of like it's fucked up. Look at it. It's not like it's fucked up. Let's watching it hard. It's not that. It was more literally just like, isn't this fucked up, dude? It was more kind of like to that effect. That's kind of like that. At least when we were writing it, at least that's the state of mind I had. I yeah. don't know what you, you know. Well, the way I like it, it's like if you haven't seen it before, go out and tr check out Drunk Batman and Robin episode five animated. Mm -hmm. And it's what it is. It's like it's Robin's just telling a, a story to Green Lantern about like a fucked up time. Green Arrow. Oh yeah, Gr Green Arrow, about a fucked up time at the Teen Titans. And that's the funny part about it, because just Ro Robin is just like the total biggest douchebag. Because when we originally made that drunk Batman and, and uh, Robin, like the live action one, we had Robin kind of be kind of like the pansy character. I, I almost will say, we maybe a little bit stereotypical, but we had sort of a different twist on it. But then we thought like, since the character has this kind of weird kind of pansy voice, everybody's kind of like calling him that. Because, you know, whenever people would tell us, like, ideas to do, they're like, oh, I'll just have Robin, like, get slapped around by Batman and whatnot like that, too. Like, you know, he's like some little bitch. And it's just like, no, 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 no. Let's do let's do the exact opposite. And Robin's totally not a little bitch. He's like a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and you find out this dark past and he's like a womanizer. He's a dick. And he's very, And he's an like, alcoholic, too, himself. Like, he, well, like, because of Batman, he, like, drives himself to drink more and then get in the fights of people and ends up actually getting raped by a woman. <laughs> so at the end though it all comes around like all the shit all the shitty stuff he does to woman comes back around to hit, get him like two or three episodes later yeah so, so, it, but yeah. The, the, so but, the world works itself out but so we decided just to take Robin and just do the exact opposite of what people were like thinking of him as and go you know now, what here's something... go ahead go ahead I was just gonna say you know what you know you may think this is what Robin is just because he may be a guy not wearing pants fuck that that guy will fucking rape your daughter <laughs> He'll bring the daughter to the slaughter, man. <laughs> what people th think of when they think of Robin, yeah. Yeah, I know. So we want to give the exact opposite of that. Really, we just made all the Robins kind of douchebags so far in the Drunk Batman series. but <laughs> In different ways, though. Yeah, in different ways. But uh, as you are saying. No, so what ends up happening after we, we... We still, like... We still, like... The guy still talks to us. Not, well, still At the time, still talks to us. And we were like, yeah, 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 uh, sorry, we appreciate the script, it's not really what we want to do, but, uh, you know, thanks for the thought and the effort, but we'll keep you posted, alright, you know? And then later, he decides he's going to develop this fan page on Facebook, and um, he sends me, like, a personal, like, private request, and I turn it down, saying, sorry, man, it's just not my thing, sorry, it's not what I'm into. And then later, 
he starts saying, hey, I want to know if you guys could actually, uh, if I could use your uh, image for, like, the main profile picture. It was a picture of, like, you and me in the, in the outfits, hands on hips, kind of like when we were looking down on the city. Or on the... And he, and he says, uh, and he says, uh, and he says something like, I don't know, like the pantsless adventures of Robin or, or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I really don't feel comfortable with you using my image for that website. And he says like, all right, how about this? And then it's just a picture of you. I'm like, you From know what? Uh, down. Yeah, no, no, no. It starts off just of you. So like, you're cropped out. So how's that? I'm like, um, it's not me. So I really can't say. And then it just crops it even zooms in even more and it's just basically a picture of your fucking like your fucking balls and the like bare legs <laughs> and then he's just like, oh is this okay i'm like you're asking me if it's okay to use a picture of my best friend's crotch for your for your web page profile page he says like oh no I, I didn't mean it that way i'm like look dude just you can go ahead and ask him i'm not the person you should be asking so I don't know. Then that's where it picks up on your end. And yeah, I remember he asked me, and I just go, "No, whatever you do, don't use that picture. I, use a fucking picture of Robin, but don't use a picture of me, Robin, especially like Crotchless. I'm like, that's, that's, that's me, fucking. You like, I'm playing a character, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can take the character somewhere else, but just don't take a picture of me. Like that, that's, you know, I'm not really one. Like, if it wasn't a weird thing, and he was like just a big fan, he wanted to use a picture of us, I'd be like, that's cool. But like. When it was you being used as like a leg fetish site, like I, I didn't want to be the mascot for that. <laughs> that. That wasn't what I signed up for. I just want. I just really like Batman, and apparently that led me to other places in life. <laughs> there was like also on top of that, what he also ends up doing is shortly after that, and this is where I just kind of drew the line. You think other things would have been drew the line, but then after, <laughs> well, we're, we're pretty lenient because once again, it was like the first big fan we had, so you kind of just said. Well, he, 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 he's a good supporter. You know what I mean? Like, you got, got like that. He's watched all the videos. You know, can't complain there, right? Yeah. Right, right. Right, right, I agree. And then from there, what ends up yeah, happening, yeah. what ends up happening there is he then, like, at the time, and I'm not going to totally blame this on him, but basically, at the time, there was, like, oh, actually, first I'll explain what he did, and then kind of, like, the a, a very, very small effect, which doesn't really matter in the, in the long run of it, but, um, the final straw was he uh, he sent in like he then like after I like sent, like declined the personal message like now nah, I'm not interested. He then sent me like a fate like right on my main wall on my main wall where everybody can fucking see where your grandmother could see it. He posts like 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 Raven's light like Raven and Robin's leg site, you know, special fetish site or whatever, like right on my main fucking wall after I sent a personal message, like, dude, I'm not interested. And that's where I'm just like, fuck. Fuck you, and, man. And right at that time, right at that time, and I'm not going to blame him for this, probably if she's able to like quickly, I don't know. Uh, there's this girl I was talking to right around that same time. We weren't friends on Facebook. We had classes together and she was hella cool. And it was more like we, we didn't even. I was going to. There was a reason why she wasn't friends with you on Facebook. The day she went to look for a friend request, that fucking picture was there. This shit was up. This shit was up. <laughs> and she was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to be. I, I just don't want to be near that. And I was just. And it, by that point, it was kind of like she already kind of like, for whatever reason, had to drop out of the class. And Facebook was my one shit. was my one kind of like, because I didn't have her number. It was just Facebook. It was the e, it was the ease in, you know? So just mm -hmm. motherfucker. And then last, the last few times I just passed her, like, hey, what's up? She's like, oh, um, hi. You know, just very like, hello. There. That's, that. He's like, she turns to her friend. That's the leg guy. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he gets off by looking at cartoon characters' legs and fucking beating it. That's what a guy named Blue Soul Jim told me on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, him and his buddy are the fucking mascots of this like leg <laughs> fetish. <side. laughs> well, what are their mascots? Well, it's not even all that original. It's just drunk. It's just like Batman and Robin, but they're alcoholics, and they got something about fucking barely. I don't. You don't want to look too long into it. It's just like a maze of fucked upness and depression. <laughs> just, just, just you're, you're better off just not knowing. I, I'm sorry I even brought it up to you. <laughs> I'm so glad I started dating that meth head again. It's way better than what I've been with that guy. <laughs> At least he's going somewhere. <laughs> he knows what he wants. This guy's confused. He has to dress up like a bat. He has to dress up like a fucking bat and go to a fucking leg fetish site. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, that's sort of our blue soul Jim story. As I said, flattered yet scared. Has he sort of creeped out all at the same time? Because I just removed him. I just removed him after that, and I, I hardly use Facebook now. But I removed him. Are you still in any way in contact with that dude? I think the last time he left a comment was like on episode like six or seven of the podcast. Like it was early on. Mm-hmm. So if we're at episode 166 right now, this might bring him out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm not too sure. I, I think that's why we kind of like backed off a bit. We're like, well, I don't want to like just shun this guy. What's, what's good, man? He's a big fan for a while. So I just don't want to put it down like that. Just, you know, you know, you know. It's more there. of one of those things. It's not so much that he likes this weird shit. It's not so much that you know we're all we uh, whatever gets you through the day. It's more the fact of like, invi- it was like the things that stacked up one upon one upon one. Like being invited to a stranger's place to film a movie where we have to dress up like <laughs> superhero characters. <laughs> being and we're getting paid. Being asked to be like mascots of a fetish site, or after already coming out saying not very comfortable with that. See, you know the the as weird as the well, this is I won't even I won't even say the the, the script is a deal breaker. That's even at least not for me because I'm your character is the main focus of it. But that's yeah, just like it's weird, but it's not by any means. I don't think that makes the list. That's just kind of like that's almost flattering, but it's weird. Like it's flattering, but we ain't gonna do that. The big it's one not like you just, posted that on your main wall. Yeah, it's the main wall thing. And said this is Ryan doing a brand new script. <laughs> <laughs> it was All leaked in. to me. Yeah. But no, I don't wish you the guy so, any I, I think it makes for a, a very... Uh, like, that's why I held on to that. Because I was like, someday we're going to talk about this on the podcast. Because it's that funny. And I think it's a good story. And it's not something that I've ever heard on somebody else's podcast. <laughs> I don't wish the guy any harm. I hope he's doing all right. Maybe he's found some legs to jerk off onto. <laughs> like, they won't judge him. I don't know. But I hope the guy's doing all right. No, I don't wish him no harm. Just just don't be posting shit on my wall or my Twitter or whatever. I'm, I'm calling. I'm asking for trouble now by saying it. But, yeah. So. Yeah, but, you know, just being honest. But, uh, yeah, that's the Blue Soul Gym story. That The untold version that... You know, only some people ever knew. But now, no, it's there for the whole world to enjoy, so. Fear wears no pants. Yes. Wait, do I wear pants? Oh. <laughs> Damn. But still. So that's Old Man Moines Podcast, I think, for this week or day or what have you. Be sure to check out oldmanoinch.com, where you can check out not only more podcasts, but you can see all these Drunk Batman episodes we've been telling you about, and we're going to hawk them out to you, and I hopefully hope you share them to your friends, family, and whoever the hell you like to share shit with. Yeah. Um, make sure you rate us, review us on iTunes, Stitcher, and any of those other fine sites we might be located on. On to Facebooks. Yeah, come on to the Facebook, you know, Facebook slash Old Man Orange. You can find me on Twitter at Spencer S. Holmes. You can find me at Dunnigan Ryan on Twitter. And until then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. <laughs> we'll see you some other time. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast. Them legs. Them legs, I see. I'll be honest. You just go Metallica? Allison Chains. No, Allison Chains. You know, them bones, I see. It's in fucking Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Tell me what, like, voice guitar, like, 90s, like, voice guitar takes me a minute.